You're watching an NBC Bay Area News special. Tonight, we investigate the California National Guard. I don't understand. I had faith in this organization. Is this exposing the dysfunction inside the Guard? Yes. We uncover what some call a toxic culture. Members of the Guard claiming harassment, retaliation, and racism go unchecked. This kind of breakdown of discipline, this kind of flying violation, just it's a bad example. You'll see why this controversial flight under the Golden Gate Bridge raises even more questions about the hidden culture of the Guard. When he's definitely not kept the promise, there's still a culture of retaliation, there's still a culture of fear out there. And hear why the Guard's largest union demands change and accountability from the general in charge. Tonight, we investigate behind the gates of the Guard. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. Good evening. Tonight, tough questions and a look inside the culture of the California National Guard, one that's now in question. Their motto reads, always ready, always there. The California National Guard has a long history of helping our state and the nation in challenging times. But tonight, a seven-month investigation by NBC Bay Area and KNBC-TV in Los Angeles exposing a disturbing culture in the California Guard. We've talked to more than three dozen current and former Guard members, and they say top leaders are not properly addressing cultural problems with sexual assault, retaliation, and racism. I just want it to stop. I just want it to stop. She's a master sergeant serving in the guard for a dozen years. I don't understand. I had faith in this organization. And she's a staff sergeant serving the military for two decades. They are part of the 23,000 men and women serving the California Guard. A vital reserve military force serving our country in critical times of need. Sitting in that chair is against everything you've ever learned in the military. True? True. Anna Oluwadari's story started with the simple opening of a dollar bill. One day I was cleaning out the box and I found nicely folded a dollar bill. I opened it up and it had the name word on it. In October of 2010, Oluwadari was collecting money from the cash box of her informal office snack bar. I opened it up. I saw what was on it. I asked questions about it. How dare they do this? And then one of my officers in my office, he came and took the dollar bill out of my hand and he changed the N to a B. Why? In his interview, he says to de-escalate the, the issue to calm me down. Following the incident, Staff Sergeant Oluwadari sent this email to everyone in her office. It included, I am requesting that such divisive and negative feelings be kept to yourself. Five days later, another dollar bill. I opened the bill and I discovered this one, folded in the same way that this one was, and it has your mother on it. The guard investigated the dollar bill incidents, disciplined one member, but for Staff Sergeant Oluwadari, the results failed to change the culture. I'm angry because they don't see my point of view. I'm angry because they don't think it's significant enough to make changes in the organization. And I just can't accept that. I don't know what else to do. Master Sergeant Jessica Brown also can't accept the way her leaders at Moffett Field's 129th Rescue Wing handled an attack, she says, happened to her in Las Vegas. She says it started after a member of the California Guard walked her back to her hotel room. He pushed me down on my bed. She says it happened during a training mission back in 2007. And all the while I was telling him to stop, don't do it. I'm married. Master Sergeant Brown says she immediately reported the sexual assault to her direct supervisor. Now, five years later... I have no faith in the Guard. None. She believes the National Guard failed to properly investigate her sexual assault. Is this exposing the dysfunction inside the Guard? Yes. Brown says following the incident in Las Vegas, she returned to duty where she says she experienced sexual harassment and inappropriate touching. She says it continued for years. It's multiple things over and over again. Why'd you decide to get involved here? Because I'm a commander. 
Frustrated with the guard's lack of response to Jessica Brown's reports, Lieutenant Colonel David Emery sent a series of memos to General David Baldwin, the commanding officer of the California Guard. Do you have any reason to doubt her statements? Absolutely not. She's one of the finest NCOs I've ever seen. In his memos earlier this year, Lieutenant Colonel Emery wrote, no reported action has been taken against anyone in the chain of command regarding the numerous leadership and wingman failures. Another memo included, I was the first commander to display any interest in her situation. Immediately, they should have called the uh, Air Force Office of, Office of Special Investigation and conducted an investigation. For getting involved, were you retaliated against? Oh, absolutely. How many of you believe, show of hands now, you've been retaliated against for trying to do the right thing? I have. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I have. Several times. All nine of you? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Is that part of the culture of the National Guard? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. yes. What is the current reputation of the California National Guard? Well, it's not a good one. It, it's not a good reputation. It, it's, it's not. Chief Warrant Officer Ronald Petty is a decorated member of the Oklahoma National Guard. Last year, he was one of two independent investigators sent to California to investigate problems. Reading from your report, sexual harassment and hostile work environment is commonplace in the California National Guard. That's what we, we got from everybody we talked to. There was commonplace. We traveled to Oklahoma back in October to talk to Chief Petty about the report he co-authored. NBC Bay Area obtained a copy of his report, a review originally requested by the California Guard and ordered by the National Guard Bureau in Washington, D.C. Why ultimately have you decided to talk? Because so many people have asked me to. And when I found out in California that they don't have a copy of the report that I wrote. After interviewing 14 members of California's Guard, Chief Petty's report states, the California Air National Guard mediation process is seriously flawed. Racial tension has been high since 2008. The N-word and the F-word are used daily and often. And failure to investigate complaints is common. Chief, in your decades of experience, have you ever seen anything like you found in California? No. No. No, I, I never found that many people who weren't getting resolution. I have a mandate from the governor to change the culture of the unit, of the organization. He's the man in charge of California's National Guard. For three months, General David Baldwin has declined our request for an on-camera interview to address the issues raised by members of his guard. After initially offering no response to our reporting, earlier this month, the guard did send us a statement that read in part, under the direction of General Baldwin, there has been an ongoing effort to improve the cultural climate of the California National Guard. I just can't believe that the huge chain of command can't take care of people. They like to keep this a dirty little secret. They like to keep it in the closet with the other skeletons. People are getting fed up, and it's time for change. Since our investigation first aired back in November, we confirmed the California Guard now has a copy of that controversial Petty report. When we asked why no changes have been made, we were referred to the National Guard Bureau in Washington, D.C., which responded in writing, because of potential litigation and in accordance with Army regulations, the National Guard Bureau cannot comment on matters which are not part of the public record. Now take a look. This flight under the Golden Gate Bridge raises questions about discipline and fairness at the California Guard. Why it's a problem, that's next. Got a story for the investigative unit? Call us, 1-888-996-TIPS, or send an email, theunit at NBCBayArea.com. Welcome back. We pick up with more examples of the culture in question behind the gates of the California National Guard. This time, we turn our focus to an incident connected with one of the world's most famous landmarks, the Golden Gate Bridge. It was an early morning in June of last year. Some call this a reckless and unnecessary flight. But the story is in the decisions that followed. It's exclusive video showing an ill-advised helicopter trip originating from Moffett Field. When you watch this video, how'd you react? 
it uh, kind of bit the disbelief. Uh, first, in all my Air Force uh, training, I've never seen any mission requirements for fire helicopters simultaneously. Members of the California National Guard say this foggy morning produced a clear example of high-ranking hypocrisy. Why did you agree to this interview? Somebody needs to speak out. This kind of breakdown of discipline, this kind of flying violation, just it's a bad example. We altered his voice and disguised his image because he fears retribution. He's a veteran military helicopter pilot with flying experience in Afghanistan and Iraq. In your expert opinion, was this decision to fly these five helicopters a, a prudent decision? Definitely not prudent. A decision made by two top senior leaders at Moffett Field's 129th Rescue Squadron. This document shows the pilots making the decisions in the lead helicopter were Major Tom Keegan and the unit's commander, Matt Wente. Can the National Guard justify five helicopters going under the Golden Gate Bridge under these conditions? I would say no. Take a look at the video and these pictures. Focus on the fog covering the top of the Golden Gate Bridge. The video shows five helicopters following each other into a less than ideal condition and nobody's speaking up. Less than ideal because Air Force regulations require a minimum cloud ceiling of 700 feet. The top of the Golden Gate Bridge measures 746 feet. The roadway, 246 feet. The video appears to show the fog sitting well below the Air Force's requirement for safe flying. There was no purpose in the outside of that bridge. Nothing required them to go underneath that bridge. 20 pilots and crew leading the way. Sources say it was a non-emergency flight rewarding 40 other members of the Guard. Some of the sources we've talked to say this was an incentive trip, a joyride. It looks as if it was an incentive flight, which makes it... Uh, even more egregious because the people that you have on board did not buy into that risk. They don't really understand what's going on. You would expect that there would be some disciplinary action, uh, that maybe some people's promotions would be held up for making poor decisions. Following the flights, we have confirmed the Guard did not discipline Major Keegan. Major Wente was given a written reprimand. In the weeks that followed, both received promotions. Contrast that with what happened to Lieutenant Colonel Rusty Henderson. I was released from my active duty tour. Retaliation? Absolute retaliation. There's no doubt in my mind. Seven years earlier, Lieutenant Colonel Henderson was awarded this trophy, the 2005 Field Grade Officer of the Year. So in seven years, you go from the highest award in the Guard to essentially out? Out of my active duty tour, yes. How's that happen? It's a great question. I wish I had a good answer for you. Lieutenant Colonel Henderson says he was fired from his full-time position for standing up for one of his airmen. Henderson believed Moffett Field's wing leadership was wrongfully discharging one of his airmen. Ultimately, Lieutenant Colonel says he was relieved of his command for challenging leadership, a stark contrast to the promotions that followed the flights under the Golden Gate Bridge. I can tell you the culture in the 129 rescue wing is fractured. It's toxic in my opinion. And I recently let the adjutant general know that. You found some serious problems. Yes. Which brings us back to that critical report written by Chief Petty, a report funded by tax dollars ordered by the National Guard Bureau in Washington, D.C., but for some still unknown reason, the findings of his report were never provided to the California Guard until we asked the questions back in November. And from all indications, nothing significant changed. Yeah. Frustrated? I'm sure they are. He's referring to the 14 Guard members he interviewed. His report reads, sexual harassment and a hostile work environment is commonplace. You called this a big problem. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it be a big priority? Well, sure should always be a big priority when you find these kinds of things. Do you believe the information in this report embarrasses the National Guard? All yes. Long. yes. Mm -hmm. It substantiates our claims. Yep. Remember to adhere to the four principles of my command philosophy. Repeated attempts to talk to General David Baldwin and the California National Guard about that flight under the Golden Gate Bridge and the actions that followed that have been declined, leaving many unanswered questions, leaving members of the California Guard wondering why risky flights under the Golden Gate Bridge are accepted and standing up for a better culture is not. And that would be perhaps a culture of arrogance, a culture where the leadership feels the rules do not apply to them. 
places they feel they can get away with things. When we met with Chief Petty in Oklahoma, he was optimistic the change was coming to the California Guard. Now, following our investigations, the California Guard responded by calling for a new review of its programs, asking the National Guard Bureau in Washington, D.C. to conduct a new investigation into the cultural issues raised in our reports. That's expected to begin in the next 60 days. So why is the Guard's largest union standing up and speaking out? So how many investigations does General Baldwin need to tell him the obvious, that there's problems within the organization? What this union leader sacrificed to talk with us and why he says it's time for change, that's next. Got a story for the investigative unit? Call us, 1-888-996-TIPS, or send an email the unit at NBCBayArea.com. We continue now with more conflict behind the gates of the Guard. This time, it comes from the Guard's largest union. Just a year ago, this union endorsed General David Baldwin's appointment. Now, that very same union leadership accuses the Guard's highest-ranking officer of failing to keep his promises. The reason that I'm here is because it's the right thing to do. He's the decision maker for the National Guard's largest union, representing full-time civilian technicians. The reason that I'm here is because I feel that your story is the right thing to do. I mean, th this has to be told. He admits speaking out will likely hurt his union's ongoing contract negotiations with the Guard's leadership. He's talking to us after watching our investigations. He's listened as members of the California Guard talk about a broken culture where complaints of sexual harassment, retaliation, and racism are sometimes ignored and often mishandled. It's not necessarily that they tolerate it, but they don't address it. Bonch says he not only heard it from our reports, he's also heard from several members of his union. There's still a culture of retaliation. There's still a culture of fear out there. This is his picture with General David Baldwin. It's attached to a newsletter from February of last year where the union announced its endorsement of General Baldwin to take over leadership of the Guard. I have a mandate from the governor to change the culture of the unit, of the organization. General Baldwin made that promise at his Senate confirmation hearing last February. At this point, he's definitely not kept the promise. And if, if you need any evidence, you just need to look at the people that you have spoken with. Major General Baldwin promised to fix the problems you've talked about. Did he keep his promise? No. no. Since the change of leadership, has this problem been cleaned up? No. No, no. it's gotten worse. No. No. Quite the opposite. I just can't believe that the huge chain of command can't take care of people. They like to keep this a dirty little secret. They like to keep it in the closet with the other skeletons. I am extremely disappointed in him because I know how much, how much he can do. So at this point in time, it's how much he hasn't done. General Baldwin and top leaders of the Guard continue to decline our interview request, but for the first time since our original reports aired back in November, the Guard did respond to the cultural questions raised by its members. The statement included, General Baldwin has worked tirelessly to establish positive working relationships with the union and says he and his command team remain proactive in addressing our service members and employees concerns. Taking the charge of the governor and moving forward to make this hands down, bar none, the best National Guard in the United States of America. But more than 18 months after Governor Jerry Brown appointed General Baldwin, nearly a year after the general promised to fix the Guard's culture, the union's leadership says General Baldwin has failed. In answer to your investigative report, he said that he's asked NGB once more to come down and they're not going to come down for another three months. So how many investigations does General Baldwin need to tell him the obvious that there's problems within the organization? We asked Ben Bonch to grade General Baldwin's performance over the past 18 months. His answer, I would give him a D, saying, quote, I don't even think it's average. Now, the Guard's written response included this. It is both unfortunate and ill-timed that Mr. Bonch feels the need to disparage the military department with specious allegations during this period of open contract negotiations. Bonch responded saying his comments have nothing to do with the ongoing contract discussions. You've heard the conflict. How did it get started? We'll take you inside the investigation and we look ahead to what's next. Behind the gates of the Guard, we investigate 
after the break. Got a story for the investigative unit? Call us, 1-888-996-TIPS, or send an email, theunit at NBCBayArea.com. And welcome back. You've heard the accusations and witnessed the emotions by several current and former members of the California National Guard. Their courage has already forced action by the Guard, but what lies ahead? To answer that and other questions, we talked earlier this week with investigative reporter Joel Grover from KNBC-TV in Los Angeles. As we mentioned at the top of the show, investigative teams from the two TV stations have worked on this report for more than seven months. Joel, let's begin by talking about how all this started. It has been seven months since our investigations both in Northern California and Southern California kicked off. Talk about the beginning. Clearly, members of the Guard not satisfied with the answers they were getting inside their system. Well, this all began with a phone call to KNBC last year from a high-ranking member of the California National Guard. He said to me there were many men and women in the Guard who had been victims of discrimination, harassment, uh, even sexual assault, who had gone through the chain of command, complained, but their complaints were swept under the rug. We started to hear a pattern, a very similar pattern, about people who had tried to work through the system but had not gotten results. Well, let's talk about what is the next step in our reporting. Clearly, the National Guard Bureau looks like it's now going to open the doors on a new investigation. We definitely want to see what the National Guard Bureau finds in this new investigation, uh, whether the California Guard is complying with National Guard regulations in the way they handle complaints of harassment and discrimination. But I think one of the most important things is we still want to hear from General Baldwin, the head of the California National Guard. So we want to repeat, General Baldwin, our a request to speak with you is open-ended, and we hope one day he will sit down and speak with us. Joel Grover leading the investigative team at KNBC in Los Angeles. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tony. These reports started with a tip. If you have a tip for us to investigate, call our tip line at 888-996-TIPS or send us an email to the unit at NBCBayArea.com. Finally, we thank you for joining us tonight. We invite you to stay tuned to NBC Bay Area because we investigate. I'm Tony Kovaleski. Good night.